Greetings, 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 family. Welcome to IKG's Wisdom Wednesday for the month of February. We are so happy and excited that you all are able to join us for our monthly lecture series. And we are going to take a moment, just a couple of seconds to shout out people who are joining us from all over the world. For those of you who may be new to IKG, IKG is a month, oh, IKG Cultural Resource Center is an organization that is dedicated to providing information and resources and programming around African people, our history and culture. And the Wisdom Wednesday Lecture Series is a monthly free lecture series that provide us, the community, with um, exposure to various speakers who speak on topics relevant to our community and aimed at us being able to improve our lives, the lives of our family, and the lives of our community and people. And tonight will be no different. Um, before we begin, we always like to start off by sharing some events that are taking place in the community. And so I would like to share that on tomorrow, there will be a program um, sponsored by the Caribbean Cultural Center, African Diaspora Institute. And this program will be a viewing of the film Voices of the Gods. And it's a film by Al Santana that was done decades ago but he will be there um, in a discussion and I will be joining in in that discussion as a panel member discussing African spirituality. I am going to place a link in the chat if you are interested in registering and attending the event. But again, it's being sponsored by CCADI, the Caribbean Cultural Center, African Diaspora Institute. And it's a film screening and discussion of Voices of the Gods. And I will be one of the panelist members. I just placed in the chat a link if you would like to register and join us tomorrow evening from 7 to 9 p.m. Um, also, actually, that is, that is it for the events that will be taking place. So let's move on to tonight's, pro oh, tonight's program. But before I do that, I wanted to go over and just shout out a few people who are joining us. So let's see, we have New York City in the house, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, of course, always representing. We have uh, Montana in the house, Texas, ATL, Virginia, California. And California, we thank you. We know it's early there, it's around four. So we thank you for joining in. Philly is in the house. We got family from London, England. Yes, London. Of course, DC representing Maryland again. We have Haiti in the house, Haiti, yes. South Florida, California. Uh, let's see where else. Let's see, New York, New York. All right. Um, LA again, Chicago. All right, so we're representing all over, all over. Thank you all for joining us for tonight's program. So tonight we are very pleased to welcome our presenter, Ama Vital, and she will be speaking on generational legacy, the unexplained value of life insurance. She shares, Financial literacy, specifically around life insurance and the African in the African American community needs strengthening. One of the main issues is most people don't clearly understand the critical role that life insurance plays in wealth building. Many people in our communities have an idea that the disparity in home ownership contrib contributes significantly to the wealth gap that exists, yet they are largely unaware of the significant role that life insurance has when it comes to closing the wealth gap. Many of our people pass on the ethics of hard work. It is seen when one is met with statements like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, get it out of the mud, work hard, get a good education and a good job, etc." But what is understood the least by us is that labor is taxed and the highest while un 
inher inheritable wealth, life insurance in particular is taxed the least. This lack of financial resources will not only leave our communities barren for generations to come, but will have us to believe that our only hope lies in the government to close the wealth gap. Tonight's presentation will attempt to deliver a clear understanding of life insurance contracts, their purpose, uses, disadvantages, and advantages. It will also elaborate on the impact a financial legacy has within the family, community, and globally. Tonight's speaker, Martina Amavatal, is a wife of over 20 years and mother of three. She is an Akan priest of 18 years, United States Army veteran, nationally certified financial education instructor, and licensed financial professional. Ama comes to you from East St. Louis, Illinois. Since 2015, Ama has been assisting clients to create and protect their assets. She uses a holistic approach to provide comprehensive financial planning and literacy. Currently, she has started coursework at the American College of Financial Services for the designation of Chartered Financial Consultant, which is an advanced financial planning designation. Her mission and passion are to help all people achieve financial security and peace of mind. She strongly believes that financial literacy can be achieved if people feel they have the capability. She absolutely loves showing people that it's not impossible and gets her greatest joy from making a difference in their lives. So for tonight's program, um, Amma will be presenting. And if you have questions for Amma, we ask that you do place those questions in the Q&A box. So there will be a Q&A session at the end of the program. And we will take questions again from the Q&A box. So Amma, we're gonna turn it over to you. And again, thank you for being able to enlighten us tonight with your information. Well, thank you so much for that um, introduction. I am just honored to be in this space, to have the opportunity to share what I love, and that is empowering our communities financially. I did promise someone that I would shout, shout them out, and I am a woman of my words, so I would like to shout out Ms. Janice. Uh, Ms. Janice Mosey. And the reason I'm shouting her out because I got a message from her yesterday. I had no idea who she was, but she told me that she knew I was going to be speaking and that she wanted to get ahead of everyone else who would be contacting me and set up her appointment uh, first. And so she actually did. Um, I look forward to meeting with her on Friday. So I did want to honor my word and do that. Well, good evening again. Um, my name is Amma Vital, uh, and as, is, as you see here, uh, my whole passion is about generational legacy. And how did I get on this, this path? Well, let me just give you a brief uh, understanding. I came from engineering. I worked on um, Super Hornets, uh, fighter jets. I've diffused bombs. I'm a little bit brainy. Um, but what was happening is the people around me, uh, mind you, I was the only chocolate chip in the whole area I worked in. So they would have conversations around me. No one would ever talk to me. Mind you, uh, this was, oh, wow, 20 something years ago. I was like 24, 24 to 25 years old. And they would be talking about things that I would be ear hustling. But it now, you know, I never knew what they were talking about, but they were talking about you know, how they had no student loans and how they paid off this and they were getting homes. And mind you, these people were not much older than I was. So it was like, what are they talking about? But no one ever enlightened me. So I went on a quest to find out what they knew and what we didn't know. And it landed me where I am today. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So generational legacy. Most people nowadays in the last 10 to 15 years, there's a lot of talk on social media and just out in general about generational legacy. Everyone is talking about leaving a generational legacy, okay? But one of the main concerns I have is that one of the most um, undervalued tools is being overlooked 
for a lack of understanding. And so my, my whole thing is from process to purpose, okay? I wanna kind of take you through what life insurance can do for us as a people um, and what it does for others, okay? This is what uh, Sister Agile has already read. So I won't inundate you with that. But I wanna start off with some hard truths because we need to uh, reframe what we know about life insurance. And it's not a fault of our own. Of course, we always get the, the, uh, the bad information or we get a part of the information and we never get all of the information. So today I want to come to you as a professional, someone that's licensed, someone that knows, let's get down to what really is going on. Now, most people don't realize, but if you play by the rules, the work hard, get a good job to provide a living and try to save, basically what you're doing is all your efforts are being taxed. And we all know that because if we work, the working class always have to live off what's left. You pay taxes first and you have to live off of what's left. Okay, so to provide for the futures, taxes take a big piece of our earnings. Okay, now, if you win the lottery, you owe taxes, but check this out. Don't miss this. But if you get lucky in the lottery of life and you land an inheritance, you owe no taxes. And more than anything, if that inheritance comes as a life insurance payout, as you being the beneficiary, there are zero taxes. I'm talking about zero dollars, nothing, not even a penny, okay? I know this to be true, confidently true. I've delivered, uh, unfortunately, I had to deliver those beneficiary checks and help those client, help the beneficiaries claim their benefit. It does not matter how large it is. It can be millions of dollars. You pay zero taxes, okay? Let me give you a fact. You can fact check me. I don't say things that can't be fact checked. The largest insurance policy ever purchased in the United States was for $100 million of death benefit. Now you're probably scratching your head saying, who needs that much life insurance? It don't cost but X amount of dollars to put somebody away. That's one of the things I wanna talk about. Life insurance is really not for the death benefit of burying somebody. That is the absolute last reason that life insurance really exists. It exists to replace income. So I want you to keep that mindset throughout this presentation is it's to replace income, okay? So I wanna take a look at our community in particular because there's some misgiven information and there's some uh, energies, if you will, in our community regarding life insurance, okay? LIMRA is a national agency. And as I stated before, I always give information that you can go and verify. And some of the views that we have on life insurance, that's why, I work hard in the communities because my job is to restore in our communities the truth about life insurance. Yes, like everything else, they have kept us out of it. They only sold us, if you will, the, the no good policies. They only sold us policies that were not beneficial to us. That was all by design. But now we can change that. Okay, and that's what my fight is to change that. I want to see us win, you know. So let's look at this. 75% of Black Americans believe that they should own life insurance, yet just 56% have insurance coverage. So it's something that, yeah, I believe we should have it, but there's there is a too much of a gap. That's almost 20% gap, a uh, 20% uh, difference in why. If 75% believe it, there's a still a lack of 20% who don't have it. That's where I want to be. I want to be in that 20%. I want to help people understand that they can, you are capable of having life insurance. It's very important, okay? Half, half of insured Black Americans wish that they had purchased life insurance earlier in their life because once you understand its value, 
then you realize, dang, I did not buy it when it was on sale. And I know people are probably laughing at me. Like, what does she mean? When you're young, you're the most vibrant, the most healthy, that's when you should buy life insurance. That's the start of your life insurance life. I, we call it um, securing your insurability, right? So let me tell you something about other communities. When a child is born, legally you can buy life insurance when that child turns 14 days old, okay? And I don't know how many people have heard this, but some of you may, and some of you have, may have, have not heard it, but have you ever heard the term trust fund babies, okay? If you've heard that term trust fund baby, I am going to give you the understanding and the foundation of where that comes from. It's mainly a term used to describe the Jewish um, community. And what they do is when a child is 14 days old, they have about three to four policies on that child, okay? The parents purchase a policy because that policy is specifically for a purpose. The grandparents purchase a policy on that child. And then a close uncle, an aunt, purchases a policy on that child. And every policy has a purpose, okay? It has a purpose. One is for college. One is for when they get their first home. The other one is for when they uh, get married. So they have specific purposes for these policies. And they put this insurance on this life. Why do they do that? Well, at 14 days old, one, that's when insurance company will accept the risk. And at that time, an infant, a newborn has absolutely zero risk unless they are born with some defects so that is what they do and i am really trying to get uh, a concept started in our community instead of having baby showers we have million dollar baby showers and it's all related around life insurance because we have to start showing our communities how to insure the lives of us when we're young okay and let me tell you something um there will be a book list um, that I will make available, but let me tell you, you guys know it as New York Life today. They believed in life insurance way back in antebellum America. They were selling slave policies on our ancestors, okay? So just to let you know, life insurance has always been a vehicle of wealth production, okay? They just sold us the policies that were not the right ones, okay? Now, Let's look over here at building Black American through security, through insurance. That is where I want to really bring everyone to the understanding. From a consumer's perspective, most people, more than half that have coverage, they didn't buy it young enough. So what that means is that because life insurance is one of those vehicles that is built on actuarial sciences, okay, the numbers, the numbers of when people are, are expected to die, right? And so by the time we understand life insurance, we're already halfway or more than halfway to what the actuarial numbers say will be our uh, day of or our time frame for not existing anymore. So as you get closer to your actuarial date of death, life insurance becomes almost unaffordable for you, okay? Um, what do you do in that case? We're gonna talk about it, okay? One of the things that I love to do is to give people the understanding that there is something we can do because generationally we have to start looking toward the future and there's a way to manipulate, and yes, I use the term manipulate, legally manipulate your family members to help perpetuate the legacy that you really want to leave, okay? So life insurance, the, the financial leverage, it is absolutely a leveraging tool, okay? It's not about the death benefit. It is about what it can do for you while you are living, okay? It is a path to financial legacy building. It is a stable foundation. A great policy will remain um, the, the foundation of any portfolio, you go to any advisor and that advisor 
will talk to you about life insurance as a foundation. You have to have it as a foundation. It does not have to be your only vehicle for uh, investing in things like that, but it must be the foundation. If you're building a house, you wouldn't put the roof on before you put the later foundation. Okay. Now, these numbers should alarm you and anger you like they do me. Okay. The, the typical young adult between 18 and 34 years old, of no matter what race, so all races are equal during that age. Okay. They have a little wealth, but the gap rises very fast with age between 65 and 74. 65 through 74, that's retirement, that's retirement time. That's when people are trying to retire and take on the role of um, elders and, and, and things of that nature, right? But this is what saddens me. $302,000 of accumulated wealth for the median white and only 46,000 in the median black wealth. And unfortunately, I have the, the sore eyes from having to witness that week after week as I'm sitting with clients, um, as I'm sitting with my black clients who are at the age or in the door of retirement and they have not been able to accumulate $60,000 in their retirements, okay? That, is one of the places that really hurts me because had they known, and they always say to me, where were you 30 years ago? Well, I wasn't, wasn't really ready for this. <laughs> um, it's always about what I didn't know when I should have known, okay? And that's why I'm on this mission to give the information, to help families have, um, to have, uh, family meetings, because I also noticed that this is not something that we talk about openly. Um, I, I have this thing I tell my clients, I say, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I have to be financially nosy. So I have to be financially nosy because I have a fiduciary responsibility to help you put a plan in place that's going to work for you. And if I don't get all the financial information, then I, the plan will be lopsided. So I tease them and say, I just have to be financially nosy. But we don't talk about our finances and our what we have and what we don't have. Everything is a mystery. You will not believe how many people I've sat with that have said to me that they cannot uh, understand. They can't find their parents' policy or I don't know where Big Mama's stuff is. And it is just a whole lot of things that we have to clean up when it comes to that. Protecting your insurability as early as possible. That is the number one thing to take away from this. You have children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, protecting their insurability is what we must do, okay? The purpose, what is the purpose of life insurance? It literally is to leave a legacy. Um, uh, Brookings uh, article I read last year said that in the United States alone, just the US, 365 billion dollars in inheritance and bequests was passed on just in just 2021 in America only. And of that, 30 billion could not be taxed by the US government. And I automatically knew what kind of inheritance that was. Last year alone, 30 billion with a B dollars was passed on through inheritance and received zero taxes, did not get taxed. That was nothing but life insurance, nothing but life insurance. It is the only vehicle that can do that legally. Okay. You don't need Swiss bank accounts to avoid paying taxes. Life insurance is set up on the tax no tax side of the IRS tax code because it really was not for us. Life insurance was not for us. It was for people who were building wealth, okay? Designing a financial plan that sustains future generations, that is life insurance. Even if you have investments and they are great, you know, but your, 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 your legacy, your children, your grandchildren, they have to pay taxes on that money. Okay, I'm talking about you can build life insurance as big as you want it and no one can tell you that 
you can't you you can't have it. If you can afford it, you can have it. Okay. So let's talk about the types of life insurance because this is where a lot of the um, misunderstanding lies. There's only two types of life insurance. You're either going to have a term, which is a temporary policy for a specified amount of time. Okay. Or you're going to have permanent. Right now, let's talk about term. Let's kind of open our minds and understand the term policies. Okay. If you are working for the government, the state, the school system, private company, if you're not at the executive level making $250,000 or more, you have a term life insurance policy that is offered through your job. They have executive plans, but you have to be making so much money and you generally have to be in private industry for that. All jobs offer term life insurance, okay? And I am located in the DMV area and one of the largest employers here is the federal government, okay? And this is one of the things that um, I have to uh, talk about regularly is that people say, oh, I love the government. They have the best benefits, oh my God. I love, oh, I have the best. They take care of their people, okay? Until you retire and then you realize that they really didn't take care of you. What happens is you don't know what you don't know until it's time to go, right? So now let's talk about some of the advantages. Term insurance is very affordable, okay? It's very cheap, if you will, in the beginning. Because why? You're younger and you your premiums cost less. But let's say you get a term policy for 30 years. You're 30 years old when you purchase it. You may pay $30 a month. You may pay less than that. Depends on how much insurance you get. You get a million dollars of coverage at 30, you probably pay about $30. That policy will remain in force for 30 years. In 30 years, you didn't pass away. So no one received anything from that policy because that policy only pays out when you die. So you didn't die, but now you need more insurance because now you're 60 years old and now you have more assets than you had when you were younger. So now you need a renewal of that policy. When you first bought it, you could buy it for 30 years because you were young. Now at 60, let me tell you some of the things you cannot do. You cannot purchase a 30-year policy when you're 60. The most they will give you is a 10-year policy. They cap you at 10 years, and you go from $30 to about $830. And that is if you're trying to keep the same level of coverage. Even if you bump the coverage down from a million to 250000 at 60 years old, you're still paying at least $600 a month for coverage. It gets very, very expensive. Why? Because your age now has gotten closer to your actuarial date age, and they're going to charge you more, okay? They like to tell you, you can buy more insurance per premium dollars at young ages. It's simple to explain. You die within the time period, your people get paid. You die after it, and you don't renew it, there's no life insurance. It's very easy to understand, okay? And Life insurance term in particular, everyone who owns a mortgage, you should have a life insurance policy specifically for the mortgage. And this is why. Have you ever seen those estate sales when someone dies? That's because probate gives you nine months to come up with the probate taxes and fees that they're needing to collect from you. If that estate, the person who passed, does not have life insurance, then it, it becomes very um, difficult and people have to do what they have to do because now the home will possibly get sold, okay? But if a life insurance policy was taken out for 30 years, because quote unquote, we're supposed to only be paying a mortgage for 30 years or 15 if we're you know set up to do that. But let's say we do a mortgage for 30 years. You should have a life insurance policy, preferably a term policy, to trail your mortgage in case you do pass away before you actually 
um, pay off that home so that the family you leave behind who's dependent on the income you make to be able to live in that home are not out on the street, okay? Now, what are some of the disadvantages? Over time, it becomes more expensive. That happens to so many people. You would not believe how many people come into my office and that is, their, that is the problem right there. They had term, they didn't understand it. The agent didn't explain it. They wasn't having yearly checks, check-ins with the agent. And that's something you should do. Um, life insurance is not a set it and forget it, okay? Life insurance is not a product that you set and forget, meaning you never look at it again when you purchase it. Life insurance should have adjustments and changes like your life does. You get married, you should be calling the person or a professional life insurance agent who can help you. If you have a baby, you get divorced, you buy a home, you sell a home, all these different things that happen in your life. You get a raise, all these things that happen. That person that you are in a relationship with financially, they should be notified, but that doesn't happen. What I've done is now I send out reminders to my clients. It's time for your annual review. We need to go over and make sure the coverage you have is still uh, is still enough, is still efficient, that the goals that you had last year, are they still the goals? And how are we tracking? Those types of things, okay? Um, one thing I can tell you, the wealthy know how to allow someone to manage their finances. And that's why they do so well at it. It's not that they know all the knowledge. They have people that are professionals to do that, right? And guess what? I do it too. And because I'm a certified financial education instructor, I do not charge you. My visits can be charged from $750 all the way up to $2,000. I can literally give you an invoice. And before we talk, expect payment. But I see a bigger picture. That is one of the other things that separates the haves from the have-nots, just in knowledge. I don't feel it right for me to do that to my community. We've been, bum we've been bamboozled enough. We've been stolen from, tricked. So my thing is if I have it, I'm going to give it, right? And reciprocity will take care of the rest. So you don't have to pay for that. No one should, should not have the financial knowledge they need to start creating a legacy. And then, of course, the one big devastating thing that you pay for this policy for 30 years. Or Big Mama was paying for this policy. I hear this too. My mother was paying for this policy for as long as I can remember. And now that she has passed away, they tell me that there is there, there no money, right? And that's because the policy had exceeded its term and no one looked into or contacted and tried to help that client before uh, the policy expired, okay? Now, this is an illustration to show you the difference in premiums and how age is a huge factor in that. So I hear people all the time, oh, I got plenty of time. I'm, I'm young. I, oh, next thing you know, 10 birthdays have passed. I've had people, you know, at least seven birthdays have passed and they still hadn't taken care of it until they got crucial. And then it's like, oh my God, it's so expensive right now. That's because the age, okay? So now you see at 30 years old, that is the annual premium that you see there, okay? That is the annual premium. That's a $38 policy, right? That's how much it costs a month to have $250,000 at 30 years old. That person aged 30 years, and now they want to renew their policy because they're, they got up in age and they said, you know what? I remember hearing this young lady talk about generational legacy and I don't want to go down in death benefit. I don't want to do it all the way down to 50,000. I want to try to keep this 250,000 because I do want to put some things in place for the family and the carry on. So now you look at that premium, that's an annual premium. That premium went from $38 to 200 and some dollars. And it continues to grow like that. And they only given it to them for 10 years. 
okay? Can't get a 30 year no more, okay? Permanent insurance. And most people on here know whole life. So when I talk about insurance, I ask them, what type of insurance do you know about? They say, well, I know term and I know whole life, okay? So let me help you understand. There's only two types, term and permanent. Whole life is a type of permanent insurance. There's many different permanent insurance. You can have universal life. You can have index universal life. You can have variable universal life. You can have a variable whole life. You can have whole life. You guys get the point, right? And all of those have different contracts. Uh, characteristics. And that's what I'm going to say right here. When it gets to permanent policy, you need a professional. You need a professional, a licensed, up-to-date professional to help you decipher what that contract is saying. Because not all permanent insurance contracts are built the same. They act different. They do different things. And that's one of the things that I'm finding is the lack of knowledge when it comes to these contracts. This is a, this is a legal contract, okay? Um, so I don't call insurance policies policies. I call them insurance contracts because that is a contract that is enforceable. Legalese language, the uh, common person do not understand. That's why they have attorneys so when it comes to insurance contract, you need to get an insurance professional, someone who is licensed and understands the contracts because you really do need to break the contracts down. So this is where I usually get a lot of questions. So if you have questions about what type of contracts and the type of contracts, please drop it in the chat because I will address that, okay? Now, uh, one thing I do wanna say about whole life insurance. There's many variations of whole life insurance, okay? And there are some terms in whole life insurance that I need to help people understand. When you talk about um, uh, whole life, what most people understand is that you pay it your whole life, right? You got to pay the premium until you die unless you have it set up to pay it for 20 years and it lasts you for the rest of your life, okay? When a policy endows, when endowment is mentioned in your contract, that means that, first of all, if the contract was written on the 2001 um, actuarial numbers, your policy is only gonna go to the age of 100, okay? To the age of 100. If it's beyond 2001, then it's gonna go to age 120. But most people have policies that will endow at age 100. And what does that mean? Well, in a permanent policy, in a whole life policy, most people know it to have a cash, account attached to it, right? When that cash is equal to the death benefit, that is when the policy endows. If the person lives past 100 years old and they do not die, they will only receive the cash value of the policy. They will not receive anything else. Okay. I just wanted to put that out there because I know I run into a lot of older people and they have the AARPs and the, you, you know, the bank, or they have the, uh, the uh, colonial pens and you have these policies that they advertise on TV. They are permanent policies. They are a type of whole life, but they have so much um, characteristics in the contract that you really need to get with somebody so that you can understand what you're purchasing okay they sell it they advertise a cheap price but there's no discount in life insurance unless you get life insurance when you're real young that's the only discount you're giving yourself okay so just kind of 
keep that in mind when you see these advertisements, okay? They are too good to be true when you see that. $9 and something for life insurance for seniors that does not exist, okay? Um, now, what I wanna talk to you about is some of the things you can use life insurance for. And most people can read this. It says that payoff summary. Did you know that people have been using life insurance in particular whole life that has a cash component to it to get out of debt. Now, why would I be talking about that? Well, let's look at the number of years that this client was gonna be in debt for 35 years. How long do people generally work? 30 to 40 years. Most people are not able to accumulate the proper amount of money they need for any type of savings, legacy building or anything because they have too much debt that they're in for too long. So what this does is wipes out 30 plus years of, of paying for debt. These people are gonna be out of debt in 4.5 years. That saves a ton of money on interest and it creates a huge amount of accumulation. So that's something I want to plant on you, plant in your mind, because most people are not able to live freely out of debt and retire. They generally carry all that debt, including the mortgage, because if they refinance and things, they got started over. There's no such thing as I'm paying, I pay 16 years of my mortgage and now I'm gonna start over in the 16th year with a refinance. No, they start that clock all the way over. And all you're doing is just pushing it to the back end, which means perpetually we never pay off our homes so that they can become true assets. Okay. Of course, I know you get to write off the interest and things like that. But at the time that most people are paying more on their principal and less in interest is when we go and refinance. Okay. These are statistics. These are not my numbers. Okay. So there's uh, a usage for life insurance there. Okay. Now, design thinking is future making. What is created or destroyed impacts our collective future. I want to talk about something that most people probably don't know, but did you know that in 2015, the HBCU community launched a huge capital funding program based around life insurance, okay? Based around life insurance. And they were pretty much, what they're trying to do, and it's still in existence today, is that they're trying to get money for these schools any institution. One of the things that I am a large proponent of is creating the world in our image. The world is not in our image as Black people. It's not. And the one thing that will help that is having money. Money is not everything, but it is a mighty tool that we need to do everything with. And that's one of the areas that the HBCUs it's like 16 schools jumped on right away. They're promoting purchasing life insurance and making the HBCU the beneficiary or either the owner, okay? So let me, let me go back to that slide because here's another part of the contract that needs to be understood clearly. There's three designations in a life insurance contract. You have the owner, the owner of the contract, okay? The owner of the contract has all rights and privileges that that contract allows, the owner, okay? Then you have the insured, the insured. The insured is the person's life that the life insurance policy is there to protect, okay? In most cases, the insured and the owner are the same person, okay? In most cases, they are the same person. But in some cases, like a parent buying insurance to insure their child, they're two different people. The parent is the owner and the child is the insured. The owner always has the rights to all of of the policies, decisions, and, and whatnot. Then there is the beneficiary, who is an entity that has no rights 
or no say in the policy, they are just the recipient of the death benefit once the insured dies, okay? Mm. So what I wanna talk about here is helping our community sustain themselves, right? And I get it. People are like, you putting the cart before the horse because we got to get our families together first before we can get these, these other things together. And that's absolutely true, okay? That's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of bringing the conversation forward so we can start having some kitchen table conversations about these types of things because that is what is going to help our community and help us as a people continue to have perpetual um, existence in this world. We have to fund our communities. And we may not be able to do it while we are working and alive. But if you have a $250,000 life insurance policy, what's 1% of that going to an institution that you want to see to, to continue so your great, great, great grandchildren will be able to know it and experience it, okay? We have to start thinking more broadly than what we've been taught to do. Because here's the thing, I do policies for all people, but my concentration is on our people. And they leave life insurance benefits to their charities, to US, what is it, USPC, the, the dog and the, the pet. They leave life insurance benefits to their organizations that they believe in. And they do it through life insurance, okay? Life insurance has many purposes, many. And that is a huge one. We cannot continue to depend on the government to make, uh, put into, uh, write into laws and things. They have laws written. They have things written that we can, we just have to understand how to navigate them. So we definitely have to start looking at that. We can be more philanthropic to our own organizations if we understand how to do it, okay? They have tax codes that will allow um, you, if you have a $100,000 permanent life insurance policy that you make a charitable organization or a 501c3 organization, the owner of the policy, because the owner and the payer can be the same person or different people. So let's say I'm the owner of a $100,000 policy, permanent policy on my life. And I want my HBCU, Tuskegee University, to be the beneficiary of that policy. But not only that, I want to get a tax break while I'm working, just like people put into their retirement plans. I want to get a tax break. So what I would do is I would name Tuskegee the owner of that policy and the money that I pay for the premium goes for the tax write-offs, okay? So they have tax laws all up and around life insurance, right? That lets you know it's something to it. And it's on the tax-free side of the IRS tax code. You don't pay taxes when it comes to life insurance. They made it very clear, okay? So now let's talk about another hard truth. And this is a um, this is something that really the society grows great when elders plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. And the reason that I bring this up is I am often faced with families, and they look at me and they're like, "I ain't gonna leave no life insurance to them." Why should I pay this premium? And they're talking about the family. They're not even talking about an institution. They're talking about their legacy, their family. And, and I don't get to enjoy none of it, you know? And that's why I talk about what you can do with the policy while you're living, right? Because there are some things that you can maneuver to enjoy that policy while you're living and still leave a legacy, okay? So that's something to uh, chew on because uh, we understand, we have been, I'm telling you, we, we all know the treatment we've received here in America, but we don't have to take on that mentality 
because it further damages our, our generations. We just, we're not able to move ahead. And so this is what I want to leave and just meditate on that. You should contact me if you feel, if you have any questions, because I help families um, set their legacies forward. And a lot of times the head of the, of the generations or the head of the family is the person that can really get the understanding across. You know, it may be grandmama, it may be grandfather, it may be a great uncle to say, hey, listen, I didn't have this information when I was this and that, but let's see how we can leverage because that's the other thing. They leverage their children, okay? You can leverage your children. You can have a policy that your young child is able to fit and can get this good insurance. And now you can, you can work with that child if you have that family dynamic. That's what we do here. We have that family dynamic. You know, I'm, I'm 50. I know I'm a, I'm a young pup and I'll, I'll take it. I know I'm young. I didn't learn this until 10 years, till I was 40. But by then, life insurance was not expensive, but I wanted to go hard at it. And I had lost 20, I had lost 20 years. So I was like, man, I wish I had known what them people was talking about. So we did it for our son. We set him up. And so we have burial policies, but the legacy we're building is through our son. So we're helping to fund his policy as if I was funding it for myself. So you can do that. And I'm telling you, the rewards are great. You know, he has a policy we're using to pay off his student loans. He'll have $30,000, $38,000 of student loans paid off in a little over three years because we are using this policy and doing what other people are doing. So it's ways to do it, okay? So the shade, I'm not worried about the shade. The shade is my son, my daughter, as long as they're flourishing and I can experience them flourish. Hey, that's, that's what, that's what legacy leaving is about. Okay. Now I mentioned the million dollar baby. So these are some of the tools that we use life insurance for million dollar baby at 14 days old, you can take literally a little bit of money and set a child up. If you're a grandparent, you have the right to do that. You know, if you're a parent, you can do that. If you're a great aunt, you can do that. I mean, there's, there's little limitations to what you can do, okay? Debt elimination, I just mentioned that. It's called the Your Family Banking System. We show you how to help your money help you. Because the thing is, a life insurance policy that is a whole life participating actually pays interest. Last time you check your bank account for savings before the inflation was 7%, it wasn't paying any interest. So my concept of this is to help people understand if I need to save money and you have good access, you have quick access, they'll give you a check in five to seven days. I, trust me, I know. You don't have to get no credit check. If the money's in the policy, they'll send you a check. Okay, you just have to request it. So now you have access to money. You have a place to grow your money. And you don't have to go through all of the red tape that they send you through trying to get loans, trying to finance a house, or even a down payment on a home, your car break down, you got to go, you don't have to do that. If, the, if you are saving money in a vehicle like life insurance, you, that's your bank. You go take the loan from the bank of you, right? And, 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 and everything else is history. Once you start doing that, you're like, wait a minute, I can do what, right? For people who have not been able to save aggressively as they would have liked to because they didn't understand the stock market or they didn't, whatever the reason, you can actually, there is a life insurance policy that can become a supplemental retirement income. Because one of the things that, I don't know if y'all have been listening to the financial news, but they're saying at the rate of inflation, by the time people retire, they're gonna need 80% of their pre-retirement income in retirement, okay? And we all know social security is so up in the air, but social security, which is an insurance product, social security is not a tax. So if you check your W2, you check your, um, your uh, check stub, you will see that it's not a tax. Social security is actually an insurance trust 
that you pay into while you're working, right? For a promised amount of money when you reach the minimum filing age of 62. According to the last 40 quarters of work, they do a calculation and they tell you how much money you'll get from Social Security. Well, Social Security is only supposed to make up 40% of your retirement income, right? Another um, 10% is supposed to come from your deferred accounts that you've been saving in, your TSPs, your, your Roths, if you have a Roth, your um, IRAs and those type of accounts, 403Bs. And then 50% of your retirement, take a wild guess, is supposed to come from your personal savings, okay? But let me tell you something. That personal savings can include life insurance, the, uh, the index universal life policy in particular, because that policy can be structured in such a way that it helps pay you supplemental retirement income, okay? If you have questions about that, please don't hesitate to contact me, okay? The term insurance exchange program, some people may have just gotten into life insurance and they may have just gotten a term policy in the last five years. I know I met a client like that um, the other day. He went to college with me, but he found me on, on social media and he has this situation. If you're within five years of just getting your term policy, you may qualify for the exchange program where you can exchange that policy for a permanent policy without having to go through any more um, underwriting if you've already gone through extensive underwriting. And what that does is give you an opportunity not to go down that road of no return and having that policy for 30 years and then trying to do something with it when it's cost you too much, okay? Some people may be in that situation. You, there is a program for you to do that, okay? One, the last thing is ensuring a stable financial future. As I said in the beginning, that foundation, if you're building a house, you're not going to build the roof before you lay the foundation. You have to have a solid foundation and life insurance is that solid foundation when you're looking at your financial house, okay? Now, heart, uh, let's go back here. Sorry about that. From process to purpose, okay? Invest with the right intent. What do I mean by that? Like I said, I, I hear so often, well, I, you know, I work hard for my money and I'm not about to be buying no life insurance. They'll take care of me when I'm dead. Put me in a pine box. I ain't worried about it. I don't need no life insurance. Life insurance is really not for the person that's paying for it. It really isn't. It's for your legacies. Because without something to uh, uh, give something to your family for, for the future, what will you give them? I can tell you the number one purpose also when a person dies is their estate. The state that you live in will look at you as a corporation, as an estate. And there's taxes and fees and things that they are looking to charge your estate. And the person that that's gonna fall on is the executor of your estate. So if that's your oldest child, now you've set that oldest child up to have a financial burden that they didn't even know they were gonna have. So this is what I say. I said, well, let's have a family meeting and let's bring all the players to the table. And if you are, just so adamant that you are not gonna buy life insurance, right? Because life insurance give instant liquidity to an estate. You can have a check in five to seven days, no matter how big the check is. Five to seven days, you will have a check in your hand. You can't do that with any other vehicle. Investments that take time, you're not about to get a check in five to seven days, okay? But life insurance, you will. So now I say, let's have a family meeting. Let's bring all the players to the table and let's really tell people, hey, listen, Sarah Jane, Agile, Ama, we need to set up a bank account that everybody pay into because mom and dad will not have any life insurance when they pass away. And everybody needs to contribute to that, even mom and dad so that there is a bucket of money available when your loved one passes on. 
not just for the funeral. It is for when they have to go down to probate to settle your accounts. I've met several people who the, they had to keep the IRS from garnishing their wages because their parent or a loved one had outstanding tax debts. Yes, they was trying to garnish the lady wages, okay? She took, it was three years she was in probate. Probate is not a one, and it goes on sometimes. So these are things to understand why you need to have a policy because you need to have that liquidity available when you pass away, okay? And my thing is just that, that is what I call the consideration for the next generation, you know, having the money that is gonna be needed so that they are not disrupting their financial lives. Because if we keep that process, then one generation is disrupted, then the next generation is disrupted, then the next generation is disrupted. And we just keep a cycle of financially disrupting um, our generations, okay? And we are never going to get where we want to be and where we deserve to be, okay? So now, this is basically me in closing. A true living benefit of life insurance is a peace of mind. There's nothing more gratifying than having a peace of mind because worrying and just being, you know, all over the place mentally is not healthy. Okay. With the proper amount of coverage in place, knowing that one's dependents will not suffer financially once uh, upon your death, there's no other product out there that can do that for you. Okay. No person or entity performs that function better, more reliably than life insurance. As long as you understand your life insurance contract, and if you talk to me, I do free policy reviews, I will ensure that you understand your contract so that you know exactly what it is that you have. I tell people all the time, we have to plan for death. You literally have to plan for death. And it's not as daunting as most people think. I've started to implement things that give people hope, give them excitement. People are now getting excited about planning for the future, even if the future means that they will no longer be here, okay? And that's what I like to do for each and every one of you here today, okay? With that being said, I always leave people with this. Are you sure that you're gonna have a great retirement or is there any doubt, okay? And retirement is not necessarily just from a job. You know, when I say great retirement as a spiritualist, as an African spiritualist, there's a process to dying. And that process of the 40 day uh, ritual that takes place, it is about settling the accounts, the financial accounts, so that that spirit and that soul can transcend to the realm of the insomnia, the ancestor realm. That's what I'm talking about, the retirement, okay? Um, with that, that is the end of what I wanted to bring forward. Um, we can open up for q and I'm sure people have some questions and some uh, furled bras, just kind of relax. I'm very easy going, but I'm very passionate about helping us get back on track. So Adriwa? Yes, yes, okay. okay. We are good. We have quite a few questions in the Q&A box. Okay. So um, I will look for questions that have a similar theme or okay. ones that you, that I think you didn't answer okay. in your presentation. If you did, perhaps, you know, just touching upon it again. And for everyone in the audience, thank you all again for joining us. If you do have questions, we ask that you place them in the Q&A box. Also, if you take a moment to look at the chat box, um, we did place in the chat box um, a link to Ama's website, as well as a link to schedule a free appointment. We also placed her book list in the chat, as well as some upcoming events. So Ama, do you wanna speak, before you um, we get into the Q&A, do you wanna speak a little bit about um, your Tuesday and Thursday events and what you have oh. coming up on Saturday? Okay, so sure. So every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, I co-host with um, another uh, outstanding young lady. Uh, we we co-host 
a webinar and it's specifically kind of talking about life insurance on Tuesdays. It's, we're trying to do our best to educate the community. You know, anybody is welcome. We give a lot of information. We give a lot of statistics and different types of uh, policies so that we can start having regular conversations about this subject. Um, it, it just, it blows my mind the lack of knowledge that has been kept away from us, you know, to something so important. So we get into that, okay? It's an hour, it's every Tuesday at seven o'clock. The link never changes, you register. Um, there's no spamming, you know, I really, I'm too busy to be trying to, to spam people. And plus I only want to engage with people who want to engage with me. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, we may ask for permission to keep you on our list to send you out information as we come across it, but you know we don't do any spam. And so that's on Tuesday. On Thursday, we go extensive. We go extensively into the using life insurance to help you get out of debt. We have a lot of people interested in that. Um, my client base for that is growing. A lot of young people. That is one of the things that's getting young people into life insurance is being out of debt. They do not want to be in nobody's debt. Um, they're like, no, I got things to do, places to go, and they want to get out of debt. So that's another opportunity for people to come and understand a little bit more about life insurance, but in particular, some of the things it can do for you. And I want to say that you can use that program for people who have a business or um, individuals. So most times life insurance sits on both sides, individual and for businesses. Okay. Um, and this Saturday, we have what we call is a business one-on-one mastermind. And we have a conglomerate of people that we bring together, all professional and licensed. We have someone who's DC and Maryland bar registered uh, that talk about uh, anything business, taxes and things like that, uh, becoming incorporated, um, the insurance side of the business, why you, need, um, why you need life insurance if you have a business partner and just all things business. So that happens once a month and it happens to be happening this Saturday. Um, it is a virtual and in-person. If you're local, you can come in person. If not, you can register for it virtually. And um, one other thing I have on there is my philanthropic um, project. As a, as a priest, as an Okonfo, um, you know, my Mecca is Ghana, West Africa, in particular, the mountains of Latte. And there is a road there that, you know, needs repairing and it's really, really bad. You, you have elders in their 80s, upwards 80s, almost 90, trying to travel this road and it is just really, really hard. So I've been tasked or I tasked myself or however you want to put it with building this road. And so one of the things that I'm doing is I'm having a fundraiser. It is a um, double good popcorn fundraiser. And people say, well, why are you doing a fundraiser? Well. Given that I see people's financials and things every day and a lot, um, we're just not in a position to really give. So what better way to give than to purchase something? That's a lot of how a lot of us give anyway. So the popcorn is great. The cause is great because that organization also donates um, a part of what we purchase to local charities. But this fundraiser is to help repair the road. It really needs a whole buildup. It is about a $23,000 project, okay? If I had $23,000, trust me, I wouldn't have to fundraise. I'd just go and take it. Um, I have uh, put some substantial amount of money down on it, um, about five, about $5,000 so far to get it to where they can just kind of move around a, a little bit easier, but it rains there. And the rainy season is pretty much going to undo the money that I put out. You know, you got to do what you got to do. So anyone that is interested in that, the information is there. I would love for you to share it with whomever. Um, it's only a four day fundraiser because that's how that fundraiser campaign works. So we're trying to do it. I've seen athletic programs raise $50,000 in four days high school programs. So it's just about the amount of people that we get, we pass it out to. So I would be so happy um, if you all could help me do that and we can get that road done before rainy season comes and wash out all the work we've already done. So 
um, I think that's it. And then my calendar is there to schedule your event, um, to schedule your appointment. Okay. And like I said, you got to come behind Miss Janice because Miss Janice is already on the schedule. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Um, so I put in the chat everyone information for the Latte Road project. And um, I'm gonna ask, I see that it has an event code. Um, if you have a direct link to Double Good, if when you get a, a moment um, before well, what, the event, let me just say this: the campaign is not launched yet. It will launch on the twenty fourth um, of the month, so it's not launched yet. It's only a four day window, so it's going to go from the last week of the month. So once I get the um, once I get the uh, the the link, I'll send it to you, and if you can send it out to the people, okay, that will possibly join. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So please disregard the message I put in um, in the chat. So the date will start February 24th. So everyone has time to get their coins and get some good old popcorn. Wonderful. Yes. So we have quite a few questions. And so I see talk. some right here too um, yes. in, the, in the chat. Um, if so you I'm want, gonna... I can take the first three because they are different. Oh, I can. Well, I'm going to go from the Q&A box. Okay, got you. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at, the Q&A box. That's where I'm at. Q&A box, yes. Okay. So um, the first one, it says, they. I guess I'm on clarification. Um, actually, let me scroll up here. And it says, he says, Ronnie says, I purchased a life insurance policy over a year ago while in my 50s. Mm -hmm. The policy will expire when I'm 82. Should I live beyond that age? Is it worth paying the higher premium at that point? Also, is it possible and or recommended as a single middle-aged adult to have more than one life insurance policy or should you purchase one really solid policy? Okay, so the answer to that question is multifaceted as the question is asked. The first thing is, if you're in the position to get some type of permanent coverage while you're still eligible in terms of age, then that is something to explore. Because by the time you're 82, you will not be able to get any life insurance. You will be doing a year to year life insurance lease that you won't be able to even fathom. So a needs analysis would do you good because it's not just the blanket answer of do I buy more or not? It's based on your assets. What do you have? What are you trying to protect, right? I, so that is really what needs to be done. The other part of your question is, um, it depends on what it is that you're trying to uh, protect. What is that you have? Do you own homes that you still have outstanding mortgages on or things like that? Then it will be a recommendation made, if that makes sense. And you can, I'm free. You know, I give you an hour appointment for free. My link to my calendar is there. It does not cost you anything. There's no for sales. There's no obligation. I'm really trying to help uh, help you get the answers to what you need. Great. And um, I like that you're following along on the on the um, Q and A box. So I'm going to the to the next question by anonymous. Mm -hmm. um, is purchasing a single premium annuity a good idea? in addition to investing in the stock market, limited funds and a short timeline to retirement. Okay, that is definitely a question that the person needs to contact me because right. one, we need to know what the short timeline is, how old are they, uh, what is their, uh, what are they thinking in terms of a single premium annuity? Just so everybody on here understands, an annuity is a lifetime pay. Uh, that's, what, that's what social security is, is an annuity. Right. So this person is asking about retirement money. That person definitely needs to contact me because there's a little bit more information I need before I can say yay or nay. You know, age is always a factor and, you know, how much uh, time they have left at work and things like that and what they need monthly because uh, annuity can pay out monthly. You know, so, so we need that. to know can you they need. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. A person was also asking, can you explain a single premium annuity? Is it insurance? So that's so, really yes. Yeah, so like so annuities can only be offered by an insurance company. So an annuity, 
a pension is a type of annuity. Your job does not offer you the annuity. What you don't see in the back end is that they have a contract under your name with an insurance company that is offering the annuity, right? Even if it's the government, because the government met metropolitan life offers that annuity to you, that lifetime pay, that pension is what it's called, but it's an annuity. So all annuities are contracts that are offered by insurance companies. Okay, I hope that answers the question. All annuities, single pay, lifetime pay, does not matter what type of annuity it is. It's offered through an insurance company. No other company offers annuities. Okay. So it's an insurance product, just works different. All right, next question. Can you still take out a policy on your adult children, 18 and 33 years with their consent? Yes, that person needs to contact me. There's a few rules. The 18 year old, um, not is, is not too hard. The 33 year old, we have to take into account if that person has insurance on themselves and it's just about the ownership for the 33 year old. But yes, you can do that. All right, Deborah would like to know, are universal life policies good to have for long-term care purposes? No insurance product is good for long-term care purposes. I have to say that to keep my license good. The flip side to that is you can get a universal life policy. And what it uh, does is that if you become critically, chronically, or terminally ill or critically injured, you can take what is called an advance on the death benefit. For easy math, you have a $100,000 life insurance policy with a payout of $100,000. You become, you know, I don't wish no harm, but let's say you get a, a, a critical uh, illness. You get a diagnosis that came out of nowhere. You can actually take an, you can actually take an advancement depending on the severity of that diagnosis. Let's say it uh, gives you a uh, 50% um, opportunity. You can take $50,000 from the 100000 tax-free, check in your hand, lump sum payment, and, and that money can help you do what it is that you need to do. So it depends on your situation. If you're over 50 and you don't have long-term care, that may be the better option because long-term care insurance is expensive. I hope that helps. If you have questions, just contact me. To follow up to that question, um, another attendee, Terry, mm -hmm. um, had a similar a similar scenario um, where you have a hundred thousand dollar policy and you borrow against it. Um, you you borrow fifty thousand dollars at the time of death. Will the beneficiary? Well, I'm not sure. If I know what they're question. asking. I know what they're asking. Okay? okay, so that question is for outstanding loans borrowed against a permanent policy, right? So if you borrow the, if you, the owner, borrow $20,000 from your policy, it accumulated $20,000 of cash and you borrowed it. You're not borrowing from the death benefit. You are borrowing from the cash value. And they're only going to allow you to borrow what is in the policy's cash accumulation. So if you do not pay that policy loan back upon your death, they will settle your account from the loan that you took out. If you never paid the interest, they will take it from the death benefit and your loved one will receive the death benefit minus whatever outstanding accounts that policy had. I hope I made that clear. All right, thank you. I, it was clear to me. Okay. Uh, another attendee would like to know, which is wiser to do with extra money put it off to put it to pay off your 30 year mortgage in 15 to 20 years or invest the extra money to pay off the mortgage at a I like time. this question. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Here's the deal. If you only can do one thing, you should always be paying yourself first. Pay yourself first. If you get the right policy, or the right investment, you can make your money make money. And then you can pay off your mortgage with the interest earned. And that's where I want us to get into the mindset. Take care of us first. Bill's going to be there. 
I ask this question. Most people that are not black, they don't think about paying off their bills when they get money. That is not the first thing they do. They take care of them and set those accounts up. So I would not recommend paying off my loan and not have no cash and no account that has grown. You just got a bill, you just got a mortgage that you don't, that you didn't pay it off. But what do you have, right? Because the time value of money is what you're fighting against. So I would not recommend taking and lumping off my mortgage and having had nothing setting and growing. So yes, please talk okay. to me because we do more than just life insurance. We do investments and things too. So we are full service. Great. Our next question is from Kwesi Amoa. Hey, Kwesi. Hi, Kwesi. <laughs> he would like to know, how soon can I borrow from whole, a whole life policy? Great question. You can borrow as soon as the money is in there. If you got $2,000 in there after two months, you can borrow up to 90% of it. There is no wait time on the policies that are participating um, dividend paying. So that is, that is not like a, a IUL. An IUL, you slowly grow the money because that policy has a different purpose. So if you want to know more, you can contact me. I can show you illustrations that can demonstrate exactly how the policy can work. Okay, great question. Great. All right, our next question. Are you able to take out life insurance on someone as the beneficiary without the insured knowledge or signature, such as an ex-spouse? No, 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 no. And anybody who does that for you will lose their license. There was a case in St. Louis, Missouri about three or four years ago. Sweetie Pies, her son, took out a policy on his nephew and the agent that wrote the policy up, they conspired and wrote this policy and he, and this is devastating. He wound up having his nephew killed for the insurance money. Not saying you're gonna do that, but that's why that exists. That's why they will not let you do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Terry has, uh, Terry Adams has a question. Okay. Uh, Terry writes, I was told that one should choose term when young and invest the difference <laughs> the term of 30 or 20 years end you you can have you actually can have reduced insurance because your investments through diversified means mutual okay. funds iras you will have built your retirement wealth or legacy what is your perspective on okay this? so let me be honest i won't say no company names i know exactly where that rhetoric came from okay rhetoric aside here's the deal if i i just told you that there's a hundred million dollar life insurance policy on the books right and that's a billionaire that person is a billionaire you know you know first name bill last name gates all right there has never been, that, that philosophy is, is flawed. And here's why. If you're young and it costs $30 to buy a term policy, where is the rest? Most young people don't have $200 a month to put into something, right? So they're only working on the minimum because that's what they have. They're just starting their career. To invest the rest would mean that I would have to sit down with that individual and let them see what it really takes and then separate the $30 from the 200 and tell you now $170 is what the rest looks like and then do a real analysis and not one that is just built on mutual funds because I know what you're talking about. And you would have to understand that not all investment vehicles are, are, are put together for the benefit of the client. Okay, I'm just gonna say it just like this. There's certain types of mutual funds. They go from A to F. Most people believe A is better. It's the beginning of the alphabet. When you do good in the school, they give you an A. But an A class mutual fund is not the best. Why? Because it's what we call a front loaded mutual fund where the agent commission is paid on the front end versus having your investment make money before they get paid their commission. I hope I help Terry out. 
Terry, you should definitely contact me because you need to have some other perspectives and see some other stuff. All right. Our ne the next question comes from several people. Okay. Um, basically, they want to know what can they do about insurance if you're the age range older in life, 68, 70. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're 65 plus. Um, can getting a life insurance policy work within that? So the one thing that I can tell you at that age, not everybody has offerings. COVID has changed a lot. COVID has changed a lot. So if you have some type of health issues, and I don't want to, I'm saying this very vaguely, but please listen, because you have health issues does not mean that you can't get insurance, but because of what has happened in COVID, when you get older in life, now they were not offering life insurance contracts to people who had less than standard health. If you had some health issues, they were not considering you for a policy. When you become that old or when you become that season, I don't like to call people old, when you become that season, generally you're pulling from a pool of life insurance policies that are not going to have the greatest payout. Your max coverage may be $25,000, right? And those are the ones you see coming on TV. So for the people asking about the older age, um, just give me a call so that we can talk about what seems feasible for you. And then I can say, that don't make sense. You know, that's one thing about me is my integrity. I, I live on integrity. So I'm not gonna steer you down a road uh, that don't work for you. If it don't work, anybody who know me, gonna, they know, I'm going to tell you, that don't work. <laughs> that don't work, you know. So I say, contact me. Let's go over what, you, what you're looking at. Because you may say, I only want $10,000 worth of coverage. I just, you know, I'm late in life. I just want, you know, uh, $10,000 worth of coverage. Or depends on how your situation is set with your family. Do you have someone that's insurable? Maybe a whole life policy will work because you put an insurance on that person. You say, but I want the insurance. Yeah, but a whole life policy grows cash. And a lot of times you can take the cash out of that policy so that you can have the cash when you pass away. There's many different ways to do this. I'm telling you, there's so many different ways. The best way is to contact me. Hopefully that helps. Yes. Um, audience as well, please also note the chat. I did place in the chat the book list that Alma spoke of, I just placed it in the chat again. I will also be placing in the chat, um, well, in the chat is a link to her website. I will be placing that in the chat again, as well as um, some upcoming events that Alma is a part of. Um, additionally, I'll be adding to the chat a link to an organization that both Alma and I are a part of called Ocom Kessi. Um, we will be having a lecture series, a monthly lecture, uh, um, well, a yearly lecture series happening throughout the year. Um, AMA will also be presenting again at one of those lecture series. I'm going to be putting a registration link in the chat in a moment with that. So please also, as you're um, listening, uh, get access to those links so that you have that information. Our next question comes from and Rochelle. I just want to take, I just want to take a quick second to yeah. the people because I am getting the, um, so that they know I am getting your calendar um, schedules. So I have events from Katrina, from Deborah, Janice and Gregory, Michelle Lewis, Arvell, um, Clyde Wilson, Mark, Linda, Sharon, or Sharon, I'm sorry if I mispronounced it, Jason, James, Ricky, just please know I am getting your calendar um, you're, you're, you're going on my calendar. So I'm definitely getting them. Thank you. And I will be contact reaching you all. Okay. Great. I just want to let them know that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Rochelle would like to know, do you review estate planning documents when planning the life insurance options? Yes. So we have, as I told you, we have the, our registered DC and Maryland Bar. Um, Rochelle, can you tell us what state you're in? But we do we do uh, review those documents for you. 
because that's a part of the estate planning. Great. Okay. Um, the next question is, from, is what would be the best approach in leaving your assets to the next of kin, a will or trust fund? So a will is the, um, that's kind of like the administration arm. It depends on what you have and how you're trying to leave it because a trust has to be funded, right? So if you have a trust, what are people, people are doing now is they're putting life insurances in trust so that the life insurance actually continues the legacy and they set up parameters. It depends on what you have. A will names the executor and you actually are giving things to your family, but a trust for property, land, uh, you know, your home you're living in now, if you plan on owning that home, you can have a living trust. You can have a, um, an islet, which is an irrevocable insurance trust. It depends on what you have. Again, a, anonymous, you should contact me to see what it is that you have and what you are trying to do so that you can do the best thing for your family. Because the will is not going to keep it from probate if that's what you're asking. If it's about probate, trust. Wills don't keep stuff from probate. Let me say this as I'm talking about probate. Things that keep your assets from probate is anything that you can put a beneficiary on. Your, your um, bank account, you need to put a signing. The person don't have to be a joint owner, but if you don't have a joint owner and you are a single owner of your account, you can put a signature on file for your child, your grandson, or whomever is over the age of 18 so that that money that you die with in your account does not go to probate. Your... Um, your, 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 uh, anything that you can put a beneficiary on will stop it from going to probate. That's just the real simple stuff that you can do. Okay. All right. Our next, um, the next two questions I'm going to put together because they're related. So okay. this is from Dr. Ya Ilombe and Rashamela Kumbo. And they're asking about consolidating policies. So Dr. Ya has several policies, um, whole life, universal, one for her son, but due to financial hardship, um, it's becoming difficult to cover the policy. Mm -hmm. So should she consolidate? And then Rashamela um, has five whole life policies um, for 30 years. Um, hmm. Should she surrender the value and get one large policy and she has no children? Those are the top okay. two questions. Okay. For well, both of them, it takes a, uh, we have to, we have to take a holistic look to see what you have for those policies and, and um, what would be beneficial. Cause yes, your, um, I understand the accounts, the, the monetary amount that you're paying. So that definitely takes, just schedule an appointment, have all your policies available. I will review them with you, explain the contracts to you, and then let's see what makes that work. Because you're absolutely correct. If you can't afford the policies and if they're whole or permanent policies, then consolidation can happen. And that a lot of times helps. It helps a lot. So please contact me to to make that decision. Don't cancel any policies before you get your policies reviewed. Again, don't anyone cancel any policies until you've sat with me and had your policies reviewed so that you know exactly what you're doing because that is the worst thing to do is to cancel a policy and need it and don't have it, okay? So I'm giving everybody that don't cancel anything. All right. Uh, the next question, I've been receiving offers of free life insurance of a small amount, say $1,000 from my banks and credit union lately with an offer of more at a discounted rate. Is it worth accepting the, time, the tiny offer of free life insurance, even if you don't intend to purchase more through their offer? What they're offering you is generally accidental death. That's what these credit unions are offering. I tell you all the contracts are not the same. They have make it appear that it's uh, some type of life insurance that is a that's a supplemental policy that you specifically have to die in an accident in order for that amount of money to be paid out. So that is not a real uh, policy. It's not a base policy. It's, a, it's an add-on policy. 
It's an add-on. That's accidental death. That's not worth the money, even if it's two dollars, <laughs> because it sets up a false, uh, a false um, security for you. You think it's really insurance when it's really not. It's a supplemental plan. It usually goes along with a policy. Great. Okay, we have a couple more questions um, that we're going to take. And again, if you have a question, please place it in the Q and A box. Um, but we'll go ahead and take these um, last few. If any more don't come in, um, the great questions, audience, please keep them coming. The engagement is they awesome. are very good questions. I love it. Yeah. So Janice would like to know fifty thousand dollars and Vanguard total market index fund, good or bad choice? That's a blank. That's kind of a lopsided. It is kind of a hard question to answer without knowing where the in, where the funds are being uh, indexed. But here's the thing: is it actively or passively being managed uh janice if it's actively being managed then no if it's passively being managed then you probably can do better awesome next question what is the difference between policies that require a medical exam and those that don't do both offer term and whole even if you are middle aged that is an excellent question Okay, so policies that require paramed and those that don't. The first thing is the amount of coverage. When you're going sometimes for these um, lower level amounts of coverage, they want a paramed. It's the weirdest thing I know. But if you are going for 250,000 and more, what they do is send you through what is called express underwriting. And express underwriting means that they're going to check the third party sources, which is the medical MIB board and the prescription database and your driving record to see if you have any medical uh, medications. I'm sorry, guys, my nose is if you have any medications listed, if you don't have any medications listed and things like that, then you get to qualify for the express underwriting, which will not require you to get a full medical. It is the amount of coverage that determines that. The more you get, the less you have to get medically examined. I know it's the craziest thing. It's the craziest thing, but that's what happens. It's the limits of how much you are getting for insurance. And I see Rochelle, she says she's in DC. Yes, Rochelle, we can, we will view your state documents while recommending life insurance. Okay. Um is COVID considered an accidental death? No, an accident is a, you get hit by a car, you're in a car accident, literally, literally passively. Janice, you need to send a, you need to have a, a meeting with me. Passive aggressive, passive management, you could probably do better, okay? Okay. Um, and COVID is not an accident. All right. Okay, so Janice, she can do better. And Trey would like to know, what is your opinion? Of, I think you kind of, I don't know if you touched upon this particular concept, but what is your opinion of using your whole life policy to be your own personal banker as taught by R. Nelson Nash and the Infinite Yes, Bank that's concept? what I was talking about when I said your family bank, uh, Trey. That's exactly how I help clients get out of debt by using their policy. And the reason is because you have that money that you're growing, right? Most people say you can't use your life insurance it's for the people that you, you leave behind. But if you build it right, you can use your life insurance policy. What is wrong with taking a loan from yourself? I don't have to go get my credit check. I don't have to tell the, listen to the bank tell me I got to pay 15% interest, right? I know exactly how much interest I'm going to pay. I know... I can get the money with the signing of a document and help myself live. Yes, infinite banking works. It works. We have two policies on infinite banking here in this household right here where I live, my household. It works. It is people that try to confuse the thing and, oh, you don't do this and you don't do that. It works. I have a client right now. Um, he will be eliminating 200 and some thousand dollars worth of debt. He's already eliminated $50,000 in under a year. In April or March, forget his time frame, we'll be, we'll be uh, paying off another 
$17,000 worth of debt and he's using the money, his policy. It works. If you want to know how it works, contact me. I can help you um, understand it, give you a whole debt uh, summary of the infinite banking strength for free. Okay. Don't cost you anything. So there was one question I'm going to go ahead and ask from Mahananda. Okay. And this will be our last question. Okay. What are the benefits of a living will? A living will in terms of your um, directives, because people, you know, that's, so that's the thing this is mainly is your directives, your medical directives, your financial directives. I'm trying to understand, is that what they are getting at? Okay, well, uh, Mahananda, if you are still here, if you can clarify your question and type it into the Q&A box, um, Alma can answer it for you. And while we wait for that, um, this has been such an awesome presentation and we are now winding down. Before I close out, Alma, did you want to um, have share anything additionally? Um, I just want everyone to be encouraged. You know, I want everybody to be encouraged, no matter what your age, no matter how, uh, where you at in the process of trying to sort out uh, what financial path you need to take. I want everybody to know that you are financially capable wherever you are. It does not matter. The one thing that you can, um, the one thing I don't want you to do is have the mindset when I get my money right and then I'm gonna call Ama because that is the mistake that many make. You call me to get the money right. You know, that I'm telling you, you, you have to start where you are. There's always a way. One thing I have learned from the dominant society, there is a way. And I'm telling you, I've been in, I've been in situations many a times in these high, high, high financial places that I was not supposed to be. I'm telling you, but I sit there and I soak up everything. I act brand new because I'm there as a spy. They spy on us for many a years, so that's my job to get in and find out what they what they're not talking about. And I just want everybody on this call to feel financially capable because you are. There is something out there to help everyone. I'm telling you, the, I've done some miraculous things for people who thought that they were just destitute and out from the medical. They were able to get a policy that made sense for their finances. Don't count yourself out. I'm telling you, I'm going to go fight for you. That's one thing to know. If, if you, if I'm your agent and underwrite and come back with some stuff, I'm, listen. I'm going to be like Jill Scott. I'm going to put some Vaseline on my hands because I'm going to work. I will fight for you. I'm telling you the truth. I mean, I, I just, I'm just telling you. You Your know, passion I, is definitely coming through. Yes. My I, 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 you, folks. I don't play. You ain't going to tell me. You yes. what? Yes. They did it to one of my clients. I'm telling you, they did it to one of my clients. She told, they're going to tell me that his A1C was 5.6 and he had a history, his family had a history of heart, a heart problem. I said, excuse me, this man is 60 years old. He ain't overweight. His A1C is 5.6. And you trying to tell me he can't get preferred uh, status? I said, wait a minute. That lady was so nervous on her phone because, you know, most of them be white. Listen, I'm going to tell you the truth. They be well, white, we, we, and I'm we, telling you, we need don't that was spirit, and we need that in all aspects of our life, yeah. including financial. So thank you for being that voice. Oh, that thank advocate. you. I'll be Mark like Amanda, She she responded to your yeah. follow up um, to avoid probate as to as to possessions as well as wishes after death. So the will is what you're going to do for wishes after death. If you have possessions and they're not. A possession that you can put a beneficiary on then you need to start looking at a trust because if it's if it has to go through probate just because you put a, a somebody's name to it don't mean it won't go to probate it depends on what the asset is it does that make sense bank accounts go to probate unless you put a signature on file they will send that stuff to probate and it ain't no need for it to go. That is a free asset that does not have to go to probate. You just have to do the proper things while you are living so you don't have to do that. 
Wonderful. 22411 at Yahoo. So everyone, um, thank you again for joining us this evening. Um, in the chat, again, we placed um, various links to upcoming programs by Ama Batao. We also placed in the link, I mean, in the chat, a link to register for the Acomb Kesi lecture series. Um, there's also the Caribbean Cultural Center African Diasporic Institute program tomorrow evening with the film showing of Voices of the Gods. And I will be a part of the panel discussion um, after the film showing. There's also um, the book list is in the chat as well as Amma's website and her um, calendar to sign up for a, a, a free one hour session. I mean, that is a great gift uh, to the community. So definitely Amma um, would like to thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. And I would like to invite you all out to next month's Wisdom Wednesday presentation. And it's a special one too, because it will be <laughs> Amma's husband, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Jonathan Vital of Rafoheni Kwao. He will be speaking next month on March 16th. And his topic is Reclaiming the Discipline of Psychology, Mental Health, Implications for the Black African Experience in America. And that also promises to be an informative and enlightening conversation. So definitely join us. If you would like to learn more about IKG and our programming, I'll be placing our website in the chat. So you can go to ikgculturalresourcecenter.com and you can sign up to receive information about our events. We have a, a email listserv and you will be notified of all of our events and activities. Our 2022 Egypt on the Potomac field trip season will be starting in April, and we are offering the walking field trip to uh, attend to COVID safety guidelines. And if you would like to schedule a private field trip, please go to our website and um, you can you will find information on our website to do that. So again, I'm going to place those links in the chat. Thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of Black History Month. Yes. Enjoy, enjoy the love, enjoy the love of this month and the greatness of this new year. We thank you all for coming out. Peace. Thank you. Peace.